Welcome to Half History Real Travel, your dose of history. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today I want to discuss and explain what I believe is the reason Robert E. Lee gave the orders he did at Gettysburg, and more specifically, Pickett's Charge. However, it is not only Pickett's Charge that is questioned by historians and non-historians alike, but the entire battle, including Yule's attack on Culp's Hill and Hood's attack on Devil's Den and Little Round Top, and the way Lee went about all of them. Among the reasons I have heard for Lee's decision to order Pickett's charge is that he had a heart attack earlier in 1863, which compromised his decision making at Gettysburg. It is always difficult and sometimes irresponsible to diagnose a historical figure because we cannot analyze the man himself. Speaking of health problems that may have impacted Lee, I have also heard that he and his men ate an incredible quantity of cherries and other fruit as they entered the north, and that Lee dealt with a severe case of diarrhea because of this, and this also impacted his ability to analyze the situation properly. I am not saying that these two incidents did or could not have occurred. What I am saying is that it seems as though people try to give Lee an out for making mistakes at Gettysburg. What I suggest is that Lee did not make a mistake, and to understand why Lee did what he did, we must dive into his past experiences. It is in Lee's lifelong military career that we find the reasoning for him ordering Pickett's charge. First, when Joseph E. Johnston is wounded, Lee takes command with the large Union Army under McClellan at the doorsteps of Richmond. Lee came out swinging, delivering devastating blows to his adversaries. However, during the Seven Days Battle, the Union Army holds their ground for the most part and only withdraw because of fear. Lee knocks McClellan onto the boats that brought the Federal Army to Virginia shores. However, it costs Lee dearly, losing roughly 20,000 men. Second, we see the Battle of Second Manassas, where after Jackson holds off Pope's force, Lee comes in with Longstreet and knocks Pope off the fields and sends his men scattering. Third, if we look at the Battle of Chancellorsville, arguably Lee's greatest victory, the Gray Fox sent Stonewall Jackson around the Union flank and hit them hard enough to dislodge the Union army from their position. So this brings us to the topic at hand. Gettysburg. I ask, why would Lee change a tactic that had worked for him numerous times during his first year as commander of the Army of Northern Virginia? He had great confidence in his troops that they could do what they had done at the three previous battles that I mentioned. More could be said about his motivation behind invading the North that I will cover in future episodes, but the point I am trying to make here is that, is that there is not enough emphasis given to Lee's past experiences that drove his decision making in July 1863. I want to take a step back. Lee was taught the tactics of Napoleon and Jomini, epic battles that relied on hitting the enemy as hard as one could to break their lines. The Crimean War is an example of Europeans at this time still using that same strategy and tactic that Lee used at Gettysburg. Let us not forget that Lee was in the Mexican-American War. He personally witnessed Winfield Scott's army virtually steamroll the Mexican army and attain a fairly quick victory. If it worked for Scott, he probably believed it would work for him. I do not want to take anything away from Lee as a strategist and tactician. I do not bring up this fact to criticize the man, but to demonstrate just that, that he was a man, a human. He based his actions on previous experiences. I won't criticize his decision because based on this information I just provided you, he was doing the correct thing. If he made any mistake, it was misunderestimating the amazing ability of Winsfield Scott Hancock to appropriately allocate troops where they were most needed. Thank you so much for listening. In no way do I think I have ended the discussion about Lee's decision, but I hope this video helps explain the thoughts going through Lee's head as he gave orders to Pickett, Trimble, Pettigrew, Brock and Braw, and multiple other commanders to march into the face of death on July 1863. Please let me know what you think. Is this a good argument? Do you believe the cherries are the culprit? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much.